I've been experimenting with a Hall effect switch, which is this thing out here. And what it does is it detects changes in magnetic fields. Uh, I've got it connected to the Raspberry Pi. I'll put a circuit diagram uh, in the back so you can see uh, what that looks like at the end of the video. Uh, this green light, what the green light does is it uh, is triggered by the Raspberry Pi and there'll be a small red light on the on the Hall effect switch, which is triggered by the switch itself. And let's just do a quick demo of this. Um, you can see that as I slow down the... i got to get the switch in just the right position. As I slow it down, it changes, and as I speed it up, the speed increases, as it should. And there we have it. Okay, so let's take a look at the circuit up close, and we'll also uh, take a look at the software, of course. This is the Hall Effect switch or sensor, this black thing up here. Um, note that, I don't know if you can see it, but the two of the sides are beveled like this, which tells you the orientation of the device. Okay, and in this orientation, what we have is the first wire is ground, that would be yellow, and the second wire is VCC. I'm using three volts from the Pi. A lot of people use five volts. You cannot use five volts directly with a Pi without doing uh, voltage splitting on that. So uh, be warned there, you will ruin your Pi if you hook it up to five volts and connect it directly in. And the last one is the sense pin, which actually is the thing that switches on and off when there's a magnetic field present. The hardware this time around is rather simple. I've got a, an LED uh, that I can control with my software. Uh, I've got the Hall effect switch, and I've got the device that I'm going to measure the speed of, in this case is the motor, and I've got a magnet stuck to the shaft. You can see that lump on it. That plastic thing has nothing to do with it, but it has a lump on it. And then over here, I've got my power supply, and I can control the speed of the motor for the demo um, with the voltage. And that's pretty much it for this setup. Okay, so let's uh, look at the software and see what's going on behind the scenes. This is the software behind here. Let's just start at the beginning and go down. It's not very long, it's about a screen and a half. Uh, okay, so this is for Python 3. It's a Hall Effect dynamic tachometer using interrupts. The dynamic part is important, as we're going to see in a little bit, because one of the things you cannot do with an interrupt is you cannot uh, ever have a zero RPM. The interrupt triggers the whole setup, and so if that magnet is not swinging past the uh, past the Hall effect switch, you get no reading. So if it's not moving, it's never moving past the Hall effect switch, and therefore you never get a zero reading. Okay, so the tachometer has to be moving in order to uh, to get an effect. Okay, so it's real time. It does multiple continuous readings, so it takes a reading. When, it, when the shaft comes back around, it takes another reading, it measures the amount of time, and it converts that into RPM. When it's reading, it flashes an LED on pin 36 and ground 34. That way you know that the shaft is turning. And that's how I get around this problem with the when the shaft is stopped. That's how you know the shaft is stopped, because the green light stops blinking. Okay. Uh, the whole effect is on, uh, the sense is on pin 7, the voltage input is on pin 17, it's 3 volts. Again, if you use 5 volts, uh, you'll burn up your Pi, you have to have a voltage divider to do that. And the ground is on 25. Okay, so we're going to import time, date, time, and sys, so we need the sleep function and we need time. And the sys is also so we can use control C and get out of it uh, nicely, get out of the program nicely. Uh, okay, we're going to import RPI GPIO because we're going to use the GPIO pins. Again, sense is on pin 7. Uh, the LED on off is on 36 uh, with the ground on 34. And I'm going to use board mode. So uh, when I'm talking about pin numbers, I'm going to use the board mode type pin numbers. Uh, GPIO setup, the sense pin, GPIO in. Uh, so this just defines that. Uh, GPIO setup LED pin which of course is 36 again, and that's going to be the output to the LED. Uh, there's going to be a last time, so that's the, the time, the last turn of the shaft, 
and then this turn of the shaft. So we're going to keep those two times and then we're going to uh, keep the RPM of course. Scrolling down this is the function that pretty much does it all. Um, so we define this function as events per time, so this is revolutions per time if you will. Uh, the channel which comes from this thing and then I have defined globally and a lot of people don't like global variables but I use global variables just to make this easier. RPM this time and last time which we talked about earlier. Uh, GPIO output LED pin true. So I'm turning the LED on so that we know that this has happened, this uh, routine has been accessed. Uh, we're going to grab this time from the clock. Now you have to have, the Pi does not have a uh, clock, so if you want the clock to work and you don't have the clock module, the external clock module, you need to have your internet connection on. So I've got my Wi-Fi on. Uh, I do the RPM calculation, so this converts that time. Uh, the difference in this time and last time into a value of RPMs. Then I print that, uh, as we saw earlier, I print it and it's, I use a format statement of 7.1 uh, and then I capture, I convert this time into last time. So uh, the current revolution becomes the last revolution time. Okay, GPIO.output uh, LED pin false, so I'm turning off the LED, so these two statements flash the LED and then I return back to the main routine. And that's it for the, the most important function. Scrolling down again, this is the interrupt. It detects when there's a pulse uh, from, the, uh, from the Hall Effect switch and it based on the sense pin, that's the Hall Effect sense pin. I look for GPIO rising. Uh, yeah, that's, that's when the uh, pin is starting to change value, so it's going up. You can do rising, falling, and both, but rising is most appropriate. Uh, the callback, the function that, that this uh, goes to is the events per time, which we just looked at, and I set a bounce time of very short of one, uh, because this is not a mechanical device, you really shouldn't even need bounce time, but I included it in there just for thoroughness. Okay, uh, let's scroll down again. This is the main routine. This is where the program goes to to start up. And what I do initially is I just print a message. Uh, the, well, I actually I grab the time. So hour, minute, year, month, day, and then the day of the week. And then I print the statement system is active at that variable, which is the hour, minute, year, month, date. Uh, and then I print a message for the user. If they want to get out of the program nicely, they press Control c to quit. Right now I have it on a, on a loop that goes to 1200 uh, loops, just, I don't know, just for, uh, because I did it that way. But this is especially important if you have an infinite loop, if you set this on an infinite loop, so you'll need something like this. Uh, the first uh, command is a try, and again that's so you can uh, use the Control c to break out of the loop nicely. Uh, technically, it's not necessary the way I've got it written right now. Okay, so our main loop right here is for x in range of 0 to 1200. Uh, that's going to loop 1200 times. Uh, if you want to keep the last RPM, so uh, I had this set up so that if the RPM was changing, it would show me the last RPM. Uh, I don't use that. It just prints a lot of output constantly, um, so I don't really find it necessary. But if you do, you know, that might be interesting and then I sleep for 0.5 seconds to loop before I loop back and mostly that's just because uh, I don't want the loop executing like ultra fast uh, there's just no need for it and plus the fact you may want to put some other commands in here so this kind of emulates putting other commands in there okay and the exception is for when someone presses control C uh, it waits two seconds to allow everything to settle down before quitting uh, it sets the LED to off and then uh, it resets the, uh, the uh, interrupt and then it does a GPIO cleanup which puts all the GPIO pins back in position and then it prints done. And that done lets you know that uh, the program is executed, uh, has ended nicely. So this circuit and software is useful for controlling anything 
where you need to know the number of revolutions or the number of revolutions per time, as in this case. It could be uh, controlling a robot, distance, speed, uh, speed of a motor, how, how many RPMs the motor is turning, anything like that that you uh, need to control or count. Okay, I well, hope you found that useful and interesting in your Raspberry Pi experimentation.